derive an expression for Jacobi's integral. So I can either give you the term of h is equal to summation p j q j dot minus l. Okay. So it depends on what type of question I'm asking, but then it can be any form. Okay? It, uh, so in general, you have to just do this summation uh, uh, q j p j minus l. Okay, sorry. Pj qj dot minus L. So this is something which you have to derive, and this is something which you are going to see now. So uh, before we do any kind of derivation, what we do is we consider certain initial condition. So uh, when you write down your sentences, uh, try to use sentences whenever you explain. I think that's very helpful. Uh, so what you do is we'll consider number A, a conservative system. So we already know the conditions of conservative system. Okay, the Lagrangian gets modified if you take t minus v. Okay, and and if it's a conservative system, the delta t, the delta q j uh, v function gets modified and so on. Okay, we're going to use that uh, property, but we're going to look into it step by step. Okay, and then uh, constraint do not change with time. Constraints do not change with time. That means the Lagrangian would be a function of a generalized coordinate and the generalized velocity. A point to note here is when you write down in your exam, this is something like qj and qj dot. I don't need to write down again and again because we have explained it so many times. What is qj and what is qj dot? But when you write down for your exam, uh, it's preferable that you mention what is qj and what is qj dot because every answer is a new answer, right? So then what we can do is you can actually take out the total time derivative okay so you know it doesn't depend here the constant do not change with time so that means it is not time dependent here but then uh, the variables do have a dependence of time so we do take a time derivative of that okay so del l del t is equal to and then again that uh, partial derivative logic right del l del qj dot d qj dt and del l del qj dot d qj dot dt. Okay, so if you take the time derivative of that, okay, that is important. This is how you do. So do is uh, we can actually um, take the Lagrange's equation of motion. That is d dt of del l del qj dot minus del l del qj is equal to zero. What I'll suggest is all of you please look into the derivation on or how you actually represent partial derivative. Okay, that is very important. Okay, so I hope it is not very confusing because we are not taking del L. If it was del L, then it would have been del L del QJ into dQJ. That's all. But we are taking time derivative, so it is del L by del T, and that's why this dt is there. Okay, so different from whatever we have done in the section. That previous one it was not with respect to time. It was only the partial derivative with respect to the variable. Okay, I'm just doing it with respect to time now. So then we have got del L del Q J dot minus d dt of del L del Q J is equal to zero, which gives you this expression, right? And uh, what you can do is now we can actually do certain modification. The modification is this that. Uh, we we have this uh, expression of del l del q j dot, and we do have uh, here del l del q j dot, right? So this is the same. So what we do is we replace this here. So in place of this, we can write it down as d d t of del l del q j dot. This term, okay? This term comes in here. And then this is uh, dqj dt. So dqj dt is nothing but qj dot. Okay. And the second term remains as it is. It's the same. So the second term will remain as it is. It's the same, right? So this uh, we can actually do. And then we can what we can do is this. So if you go there, you see this now. D dt of qj dot into del l del qj dot. Okay, so this entire term, okay, uh, this entire term, this entire term can be written in this form. Uh, the question is why? Because you know that uh, differentiation by parts. Okay, so if you differentiate this, you can write it down as ddt of qj dot del l del qj dot. That means this one, right? Plus ddt 
of del a del qj dot into qj dot so this so to do that differentiation by part you have this equation right so this is simple i think this is not very complicated and then if it is a conservative system we do know that uh, l is equal to t minus v right we already seen that t minus v and uh, v is not dependent on qj dot so in place of l we can just replace it with uh, t minus v and then del v del qj dot will be zero so we can simply write it down as del t del qj dot del t del qj dot okay so this is simple and uh, uh, so so as i said for a conservative system so this is something which you have to write okay so please make sure that you write down these in your exam also you don't just skip steps i think this is important del and del qj dot is del t del qj dot because del v del qj dot is zero okay and, and uh, also we know that uh, the generalized momentum pj is del t del qj dot okay so you see del t del qj dot so this would be nothing but the generalized momentum okay so we can actually replace it so if we replace it we can simply write it down as del l del t okay we can simply write it down as del l del t okay uh, i think i made a miss yeah this is an equality sign okay this is an equality sign not a minus sign obviously this is this so this is the equation that we have okay so we'll just replace uh, whatever we have at del t del qj dot by pj dot and finally get this so please replace it accordingly and then do it your correction okay so we can actually take this on one side and uh, this is ddt of l and then this is ddt of qj dot pj so we down as d of summation of qj dot pj minus l is equal to zero okay and as i said in the last class a number of times you already know about the mathematical part here that if ddt of something is zero that something is a constant and what is our something here that something is summation qj dot pj minus l so qj dot minus pj minus l is a constant and this is actually called the constant of motion or jacobi integral okay this is called the jacobi function so this is actually important this is something which we have used it in the uh, solution or in the problem where we actually try to find out hamilton's equation okay so this again is nothing but a first integral okay it's also a uh, first uh, order equation of motion first order equation and this is called the jacobi integral of the system why system because why system because l is t minus v does have the involvement of kinetic energy the potential energy so it does talk about the system okay and then uh, we can actually substitute all the qjs and we can actually write down the uh, jacobi integral okay and that actually represents nothing but the hamiltonian so this is your hamilton's equation 104 so suppose you are given a lagrangian how where do you use it uh, in uh, let's say numerical problem suppose you have got a equation uh, where the lagrangian is given okay you want to find out the hamiltonian then what you can do is you can identify the generalized coordinate okay and then put it appropriately in this equation and find out the hamiltonian so you can find out the hamiltonian from the lagrangian using this equation okay becomes things becomes simpler so there are problems based on this which we are going to do okay but then at the beginning we are going to take a very simple problem that we try to understand let's take the example of a uh, uh, simple pendulum okay? so these are the applications of uh, hamilton's equation of motion now when i was discussing uh, lagrange's equation i did see that uh, the equation of motion that you derive using lagrange's equation uh, is should be something which should also be derived by hamilton's equation only the approach is different okay so your answer is not going to change so if the answer changes that means something you have done wrong okay so let's look into this let's look into a simple pendulum so you know uh, a simple pendulum of length l it basically oscillates there is a mass okay and let's say this is the position where it has been translated okay uh, let's say this is nothing but your angle theta up to which it is translated okay 
and then this is your length okay and these are the different positions mark and then if you look into the kinetic energy in general it has been nothing but uh, half mv square but then there is a motion which involves theta so there is an angular motion and you know the relation between the linear velocity and the angular velocity okay so any linear term and angular term is connected like torque is connected to force angular momentum is connected to linear momentum okay and so on so uh, when you talk about this this is something which comes from rotational dynamics which you might have studied in your class 11 okay so i don't need to explain this the velocity will become nothing but l theta dot so velocity can be written as this can be written as half ml square theta dot square okay so if theta is very small okay we can actually just derive it in this way so i don't think i need to show this but anyway it will be there in your recording so you can always check it back i don't think i need to explain this simple uh, maths here and then this uh, portion which we have uh, this is your height right this is your height this is your height okay so we can again do the maths and then from position b to a uh, we can actually find out what is the potential energy so potential energy is mgh so mg is already there in h is oa minus oc so if you look into the diagram this is your oa this is your oa entire length right and then if you uh, just uh, subtract uh, oc from here this part you actually get this part so this is your height right so this is what you are measuring and then i think this is simple what is oa oa is the length right although my diagram is not perfect i know but you know that when it oscillates it goes at a higher height but length does not change obviously so oa is nothing but l and you can take lc and you can use your trigonometry and you will find that oc is nothing but l cos theta so you can just replace it there and this is how you get mgl1 minus cos theta so uh, you will find it in a number of books that they don't do this derivation okay? because it is expected that you already know so they will directly write down mgl into 1 minus cos theta but please don't get confused this is how it is derived and i think this is very simple and then you can write down your lagrangian so if you write down the lagrangian t minus v okay it is nothing but uh, t which is half ml square theta dot square and then since you have written t in terms of theta dot the potential energy should also be in terms of theta and that's why we are using mgl 1 minus cos theta done main work is done we have already found out lagrangian we can actually find out what is your uh, p theta value which is del l del theta find it out do it then you can find out your hamiltonian see there is only one generalized coordinate theta so hamiltonian is pj qj dot l which is p theta dot minus l okay so uh, generalized coordinate is theta dot but then the, the momentum is with respect to theta p theta so we have to find out p theta p theta is del l del theta dot so it is m l square theta dot so the thing is you have to do it step by step i have done it in this sequence you can take any other sequence doesn't matter you can straight away write down the hamiltonian and write down p theta theta dot and then think about it okay what is p theta okay so think about it what is p theta then you remember the formula right and then you say okay when p theta can be found out from this particular relation i use this relation find out p theta then i can replace it so if i replace this i get the equation in this form so you see i get this equation and you see this quite uh, magically comes out to be this plus this which is quite obvious hamiltonian represents the total energy if you study quantum mechanics and then this is t plus v so see it was t minus v here and then we replace it in this equation we get t plus v that means that the system is conservative the total energy remains the same the, the system is conservative okay so this simple pendulum problem i am not only deriving the equation of motion i am analyzing it okay so don't worry we are going to look into more and more problems but right now i'm just going to uh, look into this fact that uh, you understand this okay what are the things that can be done from the equation that we have already derived then what we can do is we can replace 2 in 3 what is our 2 so look here this is our 2 okay so we have uh, replaced we can replace it here 3 so uh, if you look into 2 what is your theta dot theta dot is p theta divided by ml square we are going to replace it there so half ml square into theta dot square 
in place of theta dot square, we are going to write it down p theta by ml square whole square plus mgl into 1 minus cos theta. The question is why do we do that? Because our Hamilton's equation of motion is del h del p theta. Okay, Hamilton's equation of motion. Okay, can we go back there and then just check it once? Okay, so that we are all are confident. Okay, yes, a, 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 right answer. So uh, whatever we have done in the previous class, okay, in the previous section, this is your Hamilton's equation. So p j this is del h del p one equation, which is uh, theta dot, right? And this is p theta dot, which is minus del h del theta. So you have to find out del h del theta, and you have to find out del h del p theta. So that means whatever equation you have should be written in terms of p theta. Try to understand this. It will take some time to sink in, okay? So I'll find out del h del p theta. So I can use this equation. This doesn't have a p theta. Only this has p theta, p theta square. So it will be 2 p theta square and then ml square to the power square. So I can just do the cancellation and finally I get this p theta by ml square. And del h del theta is mgl cos theta. You can do it. But is this the equation of motion? The answer is no because this has a minus sign also. So the equation of motion would be theta dot is del h del theta, which is p theta by ml square already found out. The second equation is p theta dot is equal to minus del h del theta. So this is okay. Okay. And then we put a minus, okay? Okay, why I've written a sign here and a cos here? Might have done some mistake. Sorry, this is sign, okay? This is not cos, obviously. So uh, somehow my software does not allow me to correct it here. If I correct it also later on, it will get removed, okay? This is sign, huh? this is not cos. Cos ka kata hai na, so sign theta. Escape it moves away, but please consider this a sign, okay? Not cos. So we can't put this. So this is your equation of motion. So can I find out that uh, simple pendulum uh, equation? What you can do is you can combine these two in different ways. First thing you can do is p theta is m l square theta dot, okay? And then you can replace it in this second equation. So p theta dot you can replace it as m l square cross multiply. You can simply write it down as m l square theta dot, and then is equal to minus m g l theta. And then theta double dot plus g by l into theta is equal to zero. This is the equation of motion of a simple pendulum. If any if you use Lagrangian, you are going to get the same equation. Which equation? DDT of del l del theta dot minus del l del theta is equal to zero. Do that, put it in the Lagrangian form, you're going to get the same equation. So this is what is done by Hamiltonian. Okay. So, so uh, this is where we stop, but then try to do it it on your own okay very important this looks like a long derivation but it's not it depends on what kind of question is asked to you mm -hmm.